This is the 2019 Hyundai Elantra Limited. Top of the line for the Elantra, packing a whole bunch of features and refresh for 2019. I've got a lot to show you, coming right up. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in for this 2019 Hyundai Elantra review. This 2019 Elantra is refreshed with a new face. It's got a new hood, front fenders, grill, fascia. There are several trims, the SE, SEL, Value Edition, Eco, Sport, and Limited, which is what we have right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the headlights. On the Eco and up, you'll get LED daytime running lights. Those are those triangular lights that kind of wrap around the headlights there. They're very distinctive, they really stand out. This whole car is pretty edgy compared to the last generation. And then LED headlights will be on the Sport and Limited trim that we have right here. And the headlights do a pretty good job, except the brights, the high beams are fairly narrow. The grille is gonna be this chrome grille on every trim except the Sport model. It uh, has some black in between there. And then you've got the sensor on the bottom of the radar for the safety systems. And then down there below everything are the incandescent blinkers with some little curtain vents as well. The color that we have right here is the Symphony Silver. Then when we take a look at the wheels, we'll get 15 to 18 inch and we have 17 inch wheels on the limited trim with 225 width tires. One thing to note is on the SE and the Eco, you'll have rear drum brakes. Otherwise, you'll get four disc brakes on all of them on the other trims. And then the sport mode will actually give you larger rotors on the front. I'd love to know what y'all think of the new looks of the Elantra. Personally, I think I prefer the older one. This one's a little too edgy, too much hard angles here, but it's kind of the way some manufacturers are going. There are actually a lot of differences with the mirrors. The SE gets a blind spot mirror and that's it. Uh, blind spot monitoring is on every other trim. They will be heated on the SEL trim and up. And you can see we have these turn signals. Turn signals are on the Sport and the Limited. And then our model has reverse tilting on both driver and passenger side. And that was something that I did not expect. And then you can see we have this chrome belt line that kind of runs under the windows there. That's something on the Sport and the Limited model. And then I'll show you the smart key system in a little bit. If you're curious about the length, we're at about 182 inches, whereas the Sonata is 191. And then the Elantra GT hatchback is 171 inches. One thing I was disappointed to find out is that we have a rear torsion beam suspension on everything except the sport model. And you can feel that, you can tell when you're driving, and I'll go through the driving impressions later. Rounding out the back of the vehicle, we've got a new trunk as well. That's something that is new, new taillights, kind of a new fascia back here. We do have LED taillights on the Sport and the Limited trim, and they look pretty neat. And then the Sport trim will also give you a lip spoiler. And there are no visible or visible exhaust outlets down here either. If you're curious about driver assist features, there are none available on the SE trim. But the SEL end up will give you forward collision avoidance, lane departure alert with lane keep assist, driver attention warning, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, then the Sport and Limited will add automatic high beams and then optional on the Limited that we have with the ultimate package here is pedestrian detection for our emergency braking, smart cruise control, and safe exit assist, which is basically like a blind spot for your passengers. Let's say if you try to open up the rear door and there's a car coming, it'll let you know. Boy, it sure would be nice if one of you guys could get this trunk for me. Ah, I could really use an extra hand. Oh wait, check that out. On the value edition and up, I know that was really cheesy, but the value edition and up, you get this smart, I don't remember what it's called, hands-free trunk. So it'll open up if you have the key fob with you and you stand here for a few seconds, it'll pop up and it'll pop up enough to where you can kind of lift it up on your own. And there is a spare tire, a temporary spare tire in here. And this is very competitive at 14.4 cubic feet overall. And you can fold both seats down with a 60-40 split. The key fob for our Elantra on the value edition and up, you'll get this smart key system or the proximity key is what they call it. It's got this nice brown on it. It's, uh, it seems to be pretty durable. You can pull a real physical key out of here. And it also has push button start with the proximity key. And at night it even has illuminated door handles, which is pretty cool. The smart key is on the two front doors. You push this to unlock it and you push that button again to lock it. That's as simple as it is. Remote start is available, but with Blue Link, not through the key fob. 
Hopping into the front seat, there are some variations in the seat. But in my trim, check this out. We have the optional uh, entry and exit system to where the seat can move back. And you can even, that was the normal, you can even have it extended so it goes way back to make it a little bit easier for you to get in and out of the car. The SE model through the Sport will give you six-way manual with pump action height adjustability cloth seats. The Sport's gonna add sport seats and they're gonna have contrast red stitching. Heated seats will come standard on the value edition and up all the way to the limited. And once you get to my limited model, we get these leather seats that are pretty comfortable, especially for this class and their power with lumbar adjustment as well. And at five foot nine, I've been very comfortable. No problems with that. When I sit up tall, I've still got a little bit of space above my head with the seat, not all the way down, not all the way up. Pretty good leg space. My knee does kind of want to get close to this plastic piece up here, but otherwise I'm pretty comfortable in here. The steering wheel is tilt and telescoping on every model with this range of motion. Now taking a quick look at the inside of the Elantra. On the Sport and Limited trim, you'll get a leatherette material right above the armrest there. The armrest is not very soft. It does have a little bit of padding to it. This up here is hard plastic no matter what trim you get. I would appreciate a little bit of softness because I like to perch my arm up there. But one thing we get is two position memory settings and I don't think I mentioned that but those are right here bottle holder down there and my large my larger bottle does fit but it is a tight fit and then a little bit of storage next to that as well let's go ahead and shut the door it's a fairly solid door slam could be a little bit better over here we have our lane keeping buttons uh, to dim your lights turn them up blind spot monitoring and traction control and then the steering wheel is leather on the value edition and up, and it does have a nice feel to it with little bulky grips up here, a little opening down there. It's got a nice uh, girth to it as well. It's not too thin, not too thick. Then taking a look at the rest of the dash right here, the rest of the interior, it is very simply laid out. It is pretty clean looking. There are buttons for everything that you need, and I'd love to know what you guys think of it as well. As long as we have the key fob with us, we do have push button start. Start that up and then my seat will move forward just like I showed you and you can adjust that on the screen up here. Now taking a look at our gauge cluster, we've got regular analog gauges on the side. Standard on every single trim is a three and a half inch display, but the one that you see right here is 4.2 inches thanks to an option that we've added with our ultimate package. And I, I like this screen. There's a decent amount that you can scroll through and see your trip computer. And before I started filming, I was getting about 35 miles per gallon combined in my entire time with the vehicle over 234 miles. So that is pretty awesome. A uh, decent amount of highway, but some city as well and some stop and go and idling. So very happy to see that better than the, than I expected. You can have a digital speedometer on there. You control all of this on the steering wheel. There is a compass as well. Your uh, si uh, system settings here. So if you have like the cruise control on, you can watch that, monitor that. Driver attention warning, tire pressure. That's always good to see. And then settings, there's a lot that you can customize in here. You can change uh, the lighting. You can change how your seat moves, uh, which doors unlock, all sorts of stuff. So very nice. And then some of your driver assistance features as well. So you can turn them off or on or alter them if you need to. Now, as we move over to our screen, we have the optional eight inch screen. This eight inch screen is optional on the Sport and the Limited. Otherwise, you'll get a five inch on the SE with six speakers, no CarPlay, no Android Auto, but then a seven inch screen on the rest, which will still give you six speakers, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Sirius XM. And then our trim has the optional, uh, like I said, with the eight, eight inch screen, you'll get navigation and an infinity sound system. And we'll do a sound test in a second. I don't think it sounds as good as it should for an infinity system. One thing I really like about uh, Hyundai's setup here is that the screen is very clear it's very easy to use it does seem to be a little far back as far as reaching it but you've got all of these buttons down here so you can see everything that you need to it works well you can you've got navigation on here like i showed you there's a lot of stuff that you can change and shortcuts for everything that you need another thing to note is that everything has a really solid feel to it so there's it doesn't seem to feel that cheap with everything in here considering the class that we're in so that is good to see Everything works well. We even have dual zone automatic climate control. That's on the value, the eco, and the limited. 
optional on the Sport, otherwise it is just the single regular uh, manual controls. Everything is easy to use here as well, your fan speed, your temperatures, and everything else that you need right there. Down below we also have a 12 volt power outlet, a USB port, auxiliary port, and wireless charging, if we have wireless charging, which is on the limited trim only. Otherwise you've got a nice area for a phone, and that's an iPhone 7 Plus, so that works really well. Our heated seat buttons are right here, three tier, and then drive mode, you can hit that, and it will show up actually on the main screen, so normal, sport, smart, and I honestly have left it in smart because it will alter between sport and normal on its own and keep you basically in the optimal setting based on what it thinks that you need. This shifter feels of high quality, it is leather wrapped, and with our backup camera, uh, dynamic lines are standard on every single trim. It works well and it is still fairly clear. And we can move it down to drive, you can move it over to S to manually shift up and down in addition to that. We actually have a handbrake right here, something I wasn't expecting. I personally prefer this, but no push button brake hold or uh, parking brake. Bottle holder is one size, kind of a one size deal. It doesn't really accommodate anything super wide and it doesn't have anything to squeeze something small, but it's worked for everything I've used it for. This armrest is fairly soft with a little bit of padding. It slides forward and backwards. And then when we open it up, we get an extra USB port in here as well. Not every trim will get that extra USB port though. And it is actually a fairly deep and wide area for this class. When it comes to the visors, these sun visors, only on the value edition and up are they illuminated and have this sliding piece. So you won't have that little illumination right there. You still get a mirror, but you won't have the uh, illumination for the lowest trims. And then we have our automatic dimming rear view mirror with garage controls up there as well. So that's convenient and it works well. Next to that are, is a sunglass holder right there. And it's actually pretty good size and softly lined, something I was not expecting. And then we have a moonroof up here as well. And the sunroof is on the value, the sport and the limited. There's just no panoramic option. And then taking a look at the visibility in here, as we turn around, it's really not too bad. That rear pillar is not that fat. The back window is not too bad either, and we have blind spot monitoring in addition to that. All right, let's go ahead and hop in the back seat. You've got the same plastic trim up top. This armrest does have a little bit of padding and a bottle holder. And then I have that passenger seat all the way back. I'll try to sit behind there in this one position where I would normally sit. Now that I'm in here at five foot nine sitting behind myself, I have that seat lower than I thought I did and I can't hardly get my feet under there, but I do have some pretty decent knee space, but this is hard plastic behind the driver, so something to keep in mind if you're gonna have passengers with tight spaces. There is a small hump in the middle, not a lot of space over there. This armrest actually only comes on the Sport in the limited trim with bottle holders and padding. There are no AC vents on any trim or USB ports back here. And then with me sitting over here behind the passenger seat at five foot nine, I obviously do not fit, but I mean, you can move this seat up quite a ways. And then in terms of headspace, sitting up tall, my hair is touching the roof line. So the back seat could definitely be improved a little bit more height. The leg room's not too bad though. When it comes to the 2019 Elantra's powertrain, we got three different options, the Eco, the Sport, and then the rest. And there's a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty on every single one. The Eco gets a 1.4 liter turbo with 128 horsepower, 156 pound-feet of torque, and a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, but it doesn't get this hood insulator right here. And then there's a Sport that gets a 1.6 liter turbo with 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque that comes standard with the six-speed manual, but you can option up to get the seven-speed dual-clutch. And then the rest of them get this 2.0 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine that will put out 147 horsepower, 132 pound-feet of torque, and it is multi-point injected instead of direct injected like the turbos. The SE model, the base model, still gets this engine, but it comes standard with a six-speed manual. The rest of them will come standard with a six-speed automatic, and that SE base model can option up to the six-speed automatic. The miles per gallon is going to vary quite a bit. The Limited right here will get 28 in the city, 37 on the highway, and 32 mixed. The Eco can get 32 and 40, and then the Sport with the manual will get 22 city, 30 highway. Once you get behind the wheel of the Hyundai Elantra, my first impression is that it's a very good commuter car. It feels economical, it drives that way, and it's still fairly comfortable. You can tell that you don't have a lot of power. The steering is not very responsive. 
and there's just nothing that's really gonna wow you when you drive this car, but it does a good job of being comfortable, fairly quiet, and economical. Acceleration with this two liter, pedal down. And that's up to 50. And I had it in smart mode, which I, I really like the smart mode. It's kind of keeping me in a sport mode now because it t turned to red and changed. But once you get this engine to rev up some, you can get some decent power out of it. Before that, pedal down. And it was actually pretty quick right there. The transmission that I found in this vehicle seems to be pretty smooth. I've had really no troubles with it. There have been a couple times where I'm slowing down and it seems to almost want to downshift a little bit early and you can you kind of get you can kind of feel the jerkiness with that but it's not that bad and very rare now i'm just going to put it in normal instead of sport mode but sport mode does keep the rpms up a decent amount the braking in here just some mild push on that on that pedal is good it feels exactly the way it should it's not hard to to guess um, it's not abrupt but it's not soft either it's just perfect for a car like this. The handling in here is one thing that I would definitely sort of discount on the Elantra. Right away when I hopped in here without knowing all the specs, I could tell that I was almost positive that there's no way this thing has an independent rear suspension, which it doesn't. It's got the torsion beam. But really, you're not going to be racing around in this thing. You're not going to be hugging corners. You have the sport option for that. That does come with uh, an independent suspension, I believe. So it's good enough. There's some slack in the steering. The steering definitely is more for comfort and that's perfect for what this car is for. I would have no trouble telling someone that this would be a great commuter car. And it's not even limited at that. It's just a fairly comfortable car. It's actually quieter than I expected. Uh, I haven't been in the cloth seats of this, but if they're shaped like these leather ones are, then I think that it would be pretty nice. Uh, my decibel ratings were quieter than I was expecting. There's definitely some road noise that can get in here when you're on a rougher textured road, but my decibel ratings came in pretty good, especially for uh, the, you know this compact class. The overall ride comfort is also okay. It's not great. It could be better, especially with an ind independent suspension back there. When you hit some rough stuff, it definitely it shakes the car a little bit more than, than it could. It's, it's not soft, but it's not a rough ride either. It's average, it's probably adequate, good enough for most people. This Elantra seems to have been made with features in mind. There's some cost cutting in some areas, but I think Hyundai gave people features in this limited trim for sure, and tried to get as much into it as possible for a lower price. And when you compare this to other vehicles in this price range, you're going to get a lot of features and some things that you probably wouldn't expect. Right now I have it in manual mode, the S mode. And I didn't redline because it just, it just doesn't sound that good. It just doesn't sound all that good when you get this engine to start revving. But that's not what this vehicle's for. I got it back in smart mode and I really do like that smart mode. It changes it as needed but keeps you in an economical state most of the time. If you want something a little bit sportier with some features, you can go for that sport trim with the turbo engine that is still fairly potent. But really when it comes down to it, Hyundai is giving people a lot for their money and Hyundai and Kia both have been fantastic at being value brands. There's definitely still some, some things in here that bring it down a little bit in terms of you know what some people might think of or how quality issues but I haven't had any rattles in here I've been getting about 35 miles per gallon combined city and highway driving mixed in my week with this car and it's been more impressive than I was expecting I want to know what you guys think of the Elantra down below what would you pick in this class I've driven the Mazda 3 the Honda Civic uh, Corolla hatchback uh, so if you want to see some of those videos, please be sure to check those out. Let me know which one you would pick. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this, and we'll catch you next time.